Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jacqueline and today is my Thriller Thursday video. In my Thriller Thursday video, I usually talk about a couple thrillers that I've enjoyed reading recently. And today I have three to talk about. So let's just go ahead and get right into the video. If you don't know much about me, I'm a huge thriller lover, and so I read a lot of them. I just don't share all of them in a Thriller Thursday video because I kind of want to give you like the best of the best. So the books that I share are usually going to be a three star up to a five star. I probably wouldn't share it if it's something that I really disliked unless I decide to make a book talk video or something in that aspect where there would be spoilers. I would tell you exactly what I don't like. There are no spoilers in my Thriller Thursday video videos so you can watch them, get a taste of if the book is for you or not, and then hopefully if it is for you, you read it and you love it just like I did. The first book I'm going to talk about today is I Can Be a Better You or Bad Mommy. It has like two different titles and this was written by Taryn Fisher. I read this back in June, I believe, because it was for the buzzword readathon that I did and I loved this book. I gave it five stars. It was absolutely amazing. If you like thrillers that deal with domestic suspense, or having a like narrator or character that may be unreliable, then this is the book for you. I loved this book so much because I didn't realize that it was going to be written in like three different POVs. It was really cool that the book was divided into three parts. So part one was one character's side, part two was another character's side, and part three was the third character's side. And I really, really enjoyed that because you really got to see what every was thinking and feeling. It wasn't over the top. There weren't too many POVs, which can get confusing, especially if they flip back and forth like every other chapter. This one was done so well because it was in three different parts. This book is about this lady who had lost a baby in a miscarriage, and she thinks that the soul of this baby is in this little girl that she saw at the park. So this lady is super obsessed, decides to buy the house next door to this little girl, and kind of befriends the mom and the husband. Now I'm not gonna get into too many details because I really don't wanna give anything away because having more of a vague idea of what's going on, I just felt like really was great for the storyline, but you don't know really who is the crazy person in this book. You don't know who is like going psycho at the moment. So I really, really enjoyed that aspect. And I thought that it was just like really written brilliantly. Like I didn't know what to expect going into the book. I didn't know what to expect with the twist and the turns, like you would second guess yourself every time that you thought you knew what was happening. And so I really, really enjoyed that. It, to me, it was a little bit different than normal thrillers where, you know, you read about the story and then there's like a twist and then you read about the story and then there's like a twist and then you kind of like think that you figured it out and then there's like the big reveal. I just felt like it was so much better than that. Like, it was just written in so much more depth. And so it almost wasn't even like trying to find out what was happening. It was just like, wow, all of these people seem so crazy. Like, how is this gonna end? Because I'm reading a book about crazy people. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, then I really think that you should check this book out because it is amazing. It was definitely one of my favorite reads so far of 2019. So hopefully you enjoy it as well. The next book I'm going to talk about is Never Have I Ever by Jocelyn Jackson. And this actually was an ARC copy when I read it back in June. I read it at the beach and I vlogged everything and all that kind of stuff. So I will link that down below in case you're interested. But this book is set to release I think on July 30th, so in just a little bit, and I can't wait for it to be published because I think a lot of people are going to like this book. I had never read a book by Josh and Jackson, and I just happened to like love the cover of it, love the synopsis of it, and I won it in a giveaway, and so I decided to read it as soon as I received it, and I'm really glad that I did. This book had like big little lies vibes to me, and I just really think I love domestic thrillers. So what we see going into this book is these bunch of these moms are having a book club in one of the mom's basements. And that to me, like, I don't know. I don't know if it's because I also have a book club or just the whole like mom factor. I just love when like moms are like lying and fighting and blackmailing. Like, I just love that kind of stuff. So these moms are having this book club down in the basement. And one of the new moms that's like super cool that everyone like wants to be like, but no one wants to like, you know, admit that they want to be like her. 
So she shows up and she kind of like takes over the book club and starts playing this game because like they're all drinking. But she starts playing this game called Never Have I Ever and gets people to admit like secrets. So we find out that one mom slept with another like dad. We just don't really know who. And you know, all these secrets start coming up. But our actual main character doesn't want this lady. Like she doesn't want to tell her secrets, but this lady kind of already knows the secrets of our main character. And so it just gets really crazy after that. I did not think that there were any boring parts to this story. I loved every single second of reading this book and it was kind of a large book. So it wasn't one of those like easy reading thrillers, but so much is happening in this book. There's a bunch of blackmail going on. There's a bunch of jealousy going on. And I just really, really enjoy stories like that. And I thought that it ended perfectly. I thought it was written fantastically. There weren't too many things like going on that you get confused. Like I don't like when thriller writers have so much going on that nothing really makes sense. It's just confusing. And then they, that's how they like throw you off. I just felt like this was a really good thought out thriller. And like I said, it reminded me of Big Little Lies. And so to me, I got connected to the moms and their families and you know, that type of aspect. And so I just really, really enjoyed this thriller a lot. So I hope that you guys can get your hands on a copy soon and I hope that you enjoy it as well. The next book I'm going to talk about is All the Beautiful Lies by Peter Swanson. Now this book wasn't my absolute favorite. I ended up rating it four stars but I think that for some people they actually really would enjoy it. Now it does have forbidden romances in it so I do think that people that don't like reading about forbidden romances would not enjoy this book but that's one of the reasons why I did enjoy the book because I love reading about forbidden romances. So the story starts out with the father dying, but a lot of people think he was murdered because he like accidentally slipped. And so they definitely think that it wasn't just an accident. And the stepmom is pretty young. She was a lot younger than the father. And so she's only a little bit older than his actual son. And they start becoming kind of close, a little too close. And you read more about the actual stepmom and just how she became like okay with the fact of you know trying to sleep with the sun and so this is just more than just a thriller you're reading more about like lives and how people grow up and if like they've experienced different things while they're growing up that makes them you know different than a regular adult and so you kind of see like who's wacko, who murdered who, and what happened. The reason that I only gave it four stars was because I'm not a huge fan of the Peter Swanson endings. If you have read a Peter Swanson book, you might know what I'm talking about because this was the second Peter Swanson book that I read and it kind of did the same thing as the first one. His endings aren't very epic. You kind of find out all the answers by like three quarters of the book and then the last bit of the book just kind of like drops off for me. And so I like to read books where they have like the big reveal at the very end and you're just like trying to read as fast as you can to get to the ending and then you get to the ending and the book's over and you're just like, what happened. That's not really how Peter Swanson writes his books. He actually does a really good job with like character development and keeping you like entertained throughout the story. But then his endings are a little bit more open ended and not just a big reveal. So if you like those like tiny open ended endings, then you would probably really enjoy his writing and really enjoy his books. So many people enjoy Peter Swanson. He's just not my all time favorite, or maybe I just haven't found the book that I love by him yet. But I do really think that this was a great thriller. I read it in a day and I think that a lot of people would enjoy it since I think this is again, domestic thrillers. Like what is this video right now? I guess I didn't realize that like I must be obsessed with stories about families lying to each other, killing each other, blackmailing each other. What can I say? So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts have been. If you enjoy my Thriller Thursday videos, give it a big thumbs up because it really supports my channel and I will see you all in another video. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.